it's Alexa and I'm back with 10 more decluttering tips from the KonMari method for paper. Now there have been a lot of videos about the KonMari method but I'll tell you what it seems like everybody's dropping off after books. So it starts with clothes then books and you don't hear as much about some of the other categories. So paper is a big one and I've just tackled it. I'm really proud of how much I've achieved. So stick around and prepare to be inspired. I know I am. This is my home office and whoo. So here's my office several months into the life-changing magic of tidying up. I haven't cleaned anything so for instance this box normally I would put it in this bookcase. So I'm going to go through some of the points that I have learned following the paper process, the KonMari paper method. Okay, the first thing that KonMari says is discard almost everything. Discard everything using the method she's outlined, which is to handle each item and ask, does it spark joy? The second point, and I was really struggling with this, but it was helpful to remember, is to stick to the category. Now, she doesn't advocate going through your house room by room. I was really trying to get papers elsewhere. There are papers in the basement, and I was able to declutter a lot of those. Um, there were papers in a desk that I have in the living room. That desk is now completely empty. So I did try to stick to the category, paper. Number three, put nostalgic items and photos in their own category. Photos are going to be part of that final category with nostalgic items. So don't get distracted. Also, you will find papers that are nostalgic. So if they are just too difficult to go through at this moment, put them aside and save them for that final category. These are easy to go through. On the left, those are bank statements. These equipment manuals, I'm sure I'll find a few things in there. Number four, she wants to advise you to avoid complex filing systems. Now, I will say that I simplified my filing system. However, I am sticking with a filing system. This is the end of day one of paper and I've made a huge amount of progress. This drawer is now empty and I'm going to clean it out. This whole side area was packed through with files. Number five, don't shop for containers. Discard first, then use what you have. I'm feeling pretty good about how this is going and I'm trying to be kind to myself and just focus on what I intended to do, which is paper. Go me! <laughs> what is happening? We are getting more and more stuff. What do you think is happening? Did you find a place to hide away? Huh? Yeah? Okay, fine. Go ahead. Stay there. So, I've actually just cleared off an entire shelf. Number six, use binders for frequently used items. I have binders that have my music in them for the people I hire for my bands. I did renovate that and I'm very happy. I'll be excited to share that with you. Discard lecture materials. She says there's a paradox. Because we hang on to such materials, we fail to put what we learn into practice. And I like that theory. Point eight, she's got a whole bunch of different papers that she addresses. Uh, credit card statements, you don't need those. And warranties checkbooks, greeting cards, and pay slips. These are all things that serve a, a temporary purpose to alert us to something and then we can let them go. Number nine, I was holding on to my canceled checks. There was even a time to motivate myself, I was putting all my checks on the wall. I was actually taping every check that I got because I'm self-employed. And so I thought, you know, this is a way to, to magnify my money and make sure I'm thinking about making money and cash flow and stuff like that. So anyway, I don't know if that that was a dubious method, I don't know if it worked, but I did find interestingly that discarding the checks, the old canceled checks, um, was very gratifying and you'll see from the video there were actually some that sparked joy and I decided to keep because they are important to me like my first royalty check and some checks from a really good booking agency. And both of these spark joy. These are like mementos because that's just every 
every musician's dream is to get royalty checks for the songs that they've written. sitting on the floor of my office and uh, let's take a look at what I've achieved in terms of sorting papers. Income related, tax related, dog training. You know, it's like I, I'm not able to just go, yeah, throw away the dog training. These are from my very first dog and it was such an incredible experience training her. You know, it's like you learn how to speak dog. I was able to declutter the tax stuff a lot. I have the mortgage related stuff over there. And then those are just sort of some office supplies in here and also a label maker. Okay, let's go to the second drawer. And this one is really exciting. It was all the way back and all the sides were packed with files. I took the, the alphabetical tabs from above and I used them. So in each of these tabs now is sheet music by uh, alphabetical order. So this is just sort of loose sheet music and then this is so this is work related so um, this is my my charts all organized and by category and some more charts um, some more music stuff but a tremendous amount of headway has been made. Now this is kind of fun it's my printer! <laughs> printer ink is incredibly expensive uh, more expensive than the finest French champagne Per ounce. It was on top of this table, which I also just repainted. You know, let's just see how much we use it. Obviously it won't be ready at a moment's notice, but it's quite easy to connect. It's just a plug and a USB. The other thing that was on top of that desk was the stereo. These are all the photo albums and loose photos from upstairs. There's another big plastic bin in the basement, so that'll be the last step, is nostalgic items and photos. All right, let's move on over here. This is something I'm really proud of. We just got these binders. My son actually found them, the binders and the stickers, at Michael's yesterday. And they're just cheapo binders. They were on sale, $3.50. And so these, this is something I was thinking, the guys in my band will probably make fun of me, but I was thinking, you know what, since red is kind of my signature color, and I put it on a lot of my um, gig items too so that I know it's my cord or my cable. I thought, well, I can have all my binders be red too. So these will probably get terribly beaten up by the guys, but this is, this is my music. And so this is the music for the pianist. Um, and I have the music for um, the bass and the drums. And then I did not have um, a binder for horns. My idea here is that I will have a section for each uh, type of horn, trombone, sax, and trumpet and maybe they will be sort of detachable or something because um, obviously that would be three binders if I, you know, depending on what kind of horn I have on a gig. So, um, and that's actually in the file folder. I haven't put it in the binder yet. And the same thing goes with percussion. It's also still in the file folder. I haven't put it in the binder yet. But isn't that pretty? Oh, love it. Check out, check out all these binders I decluttered, okay? Isn't this crazy? So she says use binders. Well, I was using binders. That's actually part of why I got the uh, red binders was to replace some of these. I also want to give a shout out to Alejandra, Alejandra TV. She does organizing and she had a nice little thing about binders that inspired me to try to get better ones or at least matchy matchy ones. Down here, I just wanted to share one thing that I did. Encouragement to use what we already have. I had two falling apart boxes that had sewing supplies in it and the paints were just all loose in the bottom here. And this is a cash box that I had in the closet that was empty and covered in stickers. Scrape the stickers off of it. All my paints are now fitting in there, all my acrylic paints. All my sewing stuff is in this guy. Isn't that pretty? These are the things I actually use on gigs so I can actually grab this basket and take it, throw it in the car. These are office supplies. Again, majorly decluttered. There was probably this much in the way of, of uh, just manila envelopes alone. I had a lot of those supplies scattered all over the place before. Ah, cables. This could be even more decluttered. For instance, do I need this stereo audio cable that I haven't even removed from the box? I put the uh, garbage 
little basket. I put it on the bottom shelf of that stand-up desk. I just love my red stool. Oh, it's so beautiful. That really makes me happy. And I'm probably gonna do one more video decluttering this bookshelf. This is the tray from the cash box, so I used it as a sorter here in the desk. I thought it would be fun to have a Emirates tag on my bag so it could look like I'm somebody who flies to Dubai frequently, which is definitely not the case. A little bit hard to get, let go of maps. So I put them out on the dining room table so we could look at them a little bit and then throw them away. This is the basement and here are some product boxes that I'm going to declutter. Um, those are papers that are going to get thrown away. Some of these things are definitely nostalgic. There's even some high school yearbooks. One or two more product boxes. I'm confident that having started this process I can finish it. So it's just a reminder to get all of the paper in your house, all of it. Don't offload it from upstairs to downstairs because that's how you end up with a garage filled with, with boxes of paper. Just one more little video because I just decluttered the bookshelf even more. So this bag of books is going to go to Goodwill. Now here's the bookshelf, even more decluttered than it was uh, just a few hours before. And only one depth of books now. There were things that were kind of doubled up before. So isn't that beautiful? I just love it. Love it. Love my stool. Check out my video on how to make that. I just made that. Love it. And I love my workstation, yeah! This is point 10, and I love this. Basically, as you handle each item, you process your past. So I had a big uh, filing box, moving box, filled with all my magazines. I've been holding on to those because I don't know, that's a product that I made. I feel a lot of ownership for it and pride. However, I have never once gone back to that box. Actually, I tried to find something in that box like a few months ago, but that one issue was missing. The funny thing is that I went through this process just, you know, the past few weeks with decluttering paper and I open up the box, and this is gonna be kind of gross, but I open up the box and on top of my magazines, which are all nicely in there with their spines up, there was fresh rat poop. So, the nice thing about that is it made the decision to discard them very easy. <laughs> Report cards, school items, you know, she talks about a client who, who pulls out a school uniform from 40 years ago, academic papers and books. It's, it's an old you, it's not who you are now. And I love this quote from her. She says, the space in which we live should be for the person we are becoming now, not for the person we were in the past. Mm, so good. So as a bonus, I just wanted to mention, she says, you know, what happens is a lot of her clients, their possessions are reduced to one third to one quarter of what they had. And at that point, once you've done all that, then you can get into storage and organization, but first discard. Let the past go and enjoy who you're becoming now. So I hope that was helpful. And let me know if you've tackled paper and how it's going for you. Also, please like and subscribe if you enjoy these videos. All right, bye-bye.